Last week, we explored the key characteristics of complex adaptive systems. This week, we are exploring the different stages of how a complex adaptive system transforms. I will explain Holling's adaptive cycle and its four stages of change, and provide an example in an ecosystem and economic context. There are three properties that are required to apply the Holling's adaptive cycle. There needs to be the potential of a system that is available for change, the internal controllability of a system, or the relationship between internal variables, and the adaptive capacity, or simply the system's resilience. Can it cope with change? The adaptive cycle consists of four phases, exploitation, conservation, release, and reorganization. It describes how an ecosystem organizes itself and how it responds to a changing world. It can also be used for any complex adaptive system. Early in the cycle, the exploitation stage is a period of rapid growth as species or people exploit new opportunities and resources. It is also known as the R phase. Think of how weeds and grasses take advantage of new soil in the beginning of a forest ecosystem. Eventually, the system incrementally changes. New relationships develop and more drivers within the complex adaptive system emerge. Small trees, shrubs, and various animals have entered the ecosystem. They have developed relationships with each other and continue to grow. Eventually growth slows and resources are stored to create efficiency. It becomes difficult for new species to enter and resources are increasingly bound up in unavailable forms, like the heartwood of trees and dead organic matter. The system reaches the conservation stage within the cycle. This is also known as the K phase. Eventually, the system will reach a climax or state of maximum wealth realization. The system becomes more and more rigid and resilience declines. According to Gunderson and Holling, a system in climax has within it the seeds of its own destruction. Eventually, a disturbance will cause the system to collapse. This is the release phase, a fire, pest, or industrial development may destroy the ecosystem and all resources are released. This is also known as the omega phase. As Walker and Salt state, in systems terms, the release phase is chaotic. There is no stable equilibrium, no attractor, no basin of attraction. However, the pioneer species of an ecosystem will reveal themselves and the resources will be harnessed to stimulate a new cycle. This becomes the reorganization phase. The reorganization phase begins to sort out the emerging drivers of the new system and is also known as the alpha stage. It eventually leads back to the beginning of the exploitation phase, completing the cycle. Additionally, there are also two relationships within the cycle. The exploitation and conservation phase are known as the for loop. The flow between these two stages is relatively predictable and slow. The release and reorganization phases form the back loop. It is characterized by uncertainty, loss, and experimentation. It also has the greatest potential for change within the system. Although Holling may have created the adaptive cycle model to show resilience in ecosystems, it can be used for any complex adaptive system, such as a business or an economy. Let's apply the adaptive cycle to the airline industry. In business, the exploitation phase is comparable to a startup. Entrepreneurs are generating various ideas and growing the business is the main focus. Over time, the business will try out new and innovative ways of doing things and is keen to build up its market. Displayed is the early history of aviation. The small startup has gone through rapid expansion and has reached the conservation phase. Resources such as capital, investment, staff and knowledge are locked up in doing things in the most efficient manner. The business is well established and is no longer generating new ideas or products. This reduces the business's resiliency and eventually a disturbance will occur and send the business into the release phase. This could be an economic crisis, new legislation or the beginning of a competing market. 
Think of how COVID-19 has caused economic collapse and disrupted the airline industry. During the release phase, the social and economic capital leak out of the system, creating chaos and uncertainty. Eventually, the resources released begin to be utilised again, striving for equilibrium. This is the reorganisation phase. It is a good time in business for new collaborations and forming ideas. Let's look at Virgin Australia as an example. Virgin Australia entered voluntary administration as a result of plummeting demand. Melbourne Airport has pitched to move Virgin headquarters from Brisbane to Melbourne. Others have called for the complete overhaul of the Australian aviation industry and nationalising airports. These are all new ideas forming in the reorganisation phase, preparing to begin again into a new cycle. Because systems follow the adaptive cycle, it can be applied not only as a theoretical framework, but as a diagnostic tool for resilience. Business managers focus on the traps and critical points in the for loop instead of navigating successfully through the stages of the cycle. Businesses could use the adaptive cycle to prepare in advance of the disturbance that sends them to the release stage. For example, scientists and economists have urged the energy sector to move to renewables. Fossil fuels are a limited resource and the release stage is imminent. By diversifying into renewables, the system becomes more resilient. To conclude, the adaptive cycle is not only a great tool for observing complex adaptive systems, but it's a great way to prepare for inevitable change and to ensure the best transition into a new cycle. Thank you.